I'm NBC 10 First Alert Meteorologist Bill Henley, and this is Weather at Home. We've had so much fun over the last five years at Citizens Bank Park with the Phillies for Weather Education Day. But we're all stuck at home. The Phillies haven't started their season yet, but we still wanted to bring you weather education. So today, we're talking clouds. This is a nice sunny day, but you can see some clouds around. Some other days look more like this. Look at that, cloudy skies over the ballpark. What do you think the baseball players like? Sunshine or clouds? Let's ask them. We'll start with the manager, Joe Girardi. You know, he was an ace catcher for many years before he started managing. Does he like sunshine or clouds? Let's find out. I prefer to play cloudy days instead of real bright sunny days. You see, I have these hazel eyes that are kind of sensitive to the sun, so I have to be careful. I once missed a pop-up in a day game by about 20 feet because I just couldn't follow the sun. The sun kind of blinded me. How about that? He likes cloudy days. I wonder if Brad Lidge would agree. Ace reliever helped the Phillies win the World Series in 2008. Let's find out. Uh, maybe if I could pick my exact favorite temperature, I would say 75 to 80 degrees, sunny outside, not too cloudy. That feels like a perfect ball game weather for me. Okay, so Brad would probably like a day like this, sunshine and a few scattered clouds. That cloud is a cumulus cloud, and it's a small one, but they can grow larger and get more numerous too. See that dark bottom? That's the cloud getting taller and blocking out some of the sunlight. Now, if the clouds take over completely, now we're talking stratus. Stratus is gray skies, wall-to-wall -wall clouds. We call it overcast skies, too. It tends to keep things cooler. Now, if those clouds start giving you rain, that's something else. Nimbostratus. It can apply to rain clouds or also snow clouds, too. Hopefully you won't see any of that for a while. This time of year, you're more likely to see some of these. Those high, thin clouds, those are cirrus clouds. They're so high up in the cold air, it's actually ice crystals floating around. We still get a lot of sunshine with cirrus clouds, but sometimes those cirrus clouds can suggest storm clouds are on the way. Speaking of storm clouds, well, when you see lightning and hear thunder, those are cumulonimbus clouds, and those are to be taken seriously. When you hear that thunder sound, then it's time to go inside. Now, the one thing all clouds have in common is moisture. Water makes it up in the clouds, but how does it get there? Well, the sun warms up the entire planet and something called evaporation takes place. That's where the water evaporates. It becomes a vapor and it's in the air. I can't show you a picture of it because it's invisible. It's all around you right now. So how do we get it back out and make it visible again? Well, it becomes a cloud. As that water vapor rises in the atmosphere, it cools, and when it gets high enough, it creates condensation. It sticks to tiny particles in the atmosphere, and you see it once again. You get enough of those together, and you've got yourself a cloud. Hey, we're gonna make a cloud coming up. I've got a great experiment for you, but before we get started, make sure you download the NBC10 app and use the See It and Share It feature to send us your videos and pictures of you doing this experiment. We might even put it on TV. All right, now it's time to have some fun with the experiment. We're gonna make a cloud in this jar, and it's something you can do at home. You just need a clear vase or a jar like this, a metal top, if you don't have a metal top, a metal bowl, something metal to hold ice to make the metal cold. We're gonna stick it on top. But before we do that, need some hot water too, as hot as you can get it. Now, if you don't normally heat up water, ask mom or dad or some adult, they're always heating up water. They'll help you out with it. But this is still your experiment and you can do it too. So we need that. We also need some hairspray as well. So we're just about ready to get started. But before we get started, I think I'd like to enjoy some nice cold iced tea. Ah, that tastes great on a warm spring or summer day. What? Look at that. Do you see what I'm seeing? Look at on the outside of the glass. There's moisture on that. Have you ever noticed that? In the summertime, you've got a cold drink and there's moisture. It's almost like the glass is sweating. Well, where's that moisture coming from? It's not coming from the tea because that's inside the glass. Ah, I know where it's coming from. It's coming from the air around us. There's water all around us. It's a vapor, you can't see it. But when the air touches the cold glass, some of that vapor condenses, becomes water, 
right on the glass. Now, the more humidity there is in the atmosphere, the more liquid you'll see accumulating on your glass. Look at this. Here's a normal glass. There's nothing on it. This is room temperature, so it's not cold. You need the cold to get the moisture out of the atmosphere. And this is what happens with clouds in the sky. That's a little pocket of cold air, cold enough that you see the moisture coming out. It condenses, but there are no iced tea glasses in the sky. So how does that happen? Well, something else is up there. Smoke, dust, some pollen as well. There's all sorts of stuff floating around in the air and that's what the water condenses onto. So the water vapor sticks to those little particles. Now, we are going to use hairspray to provide those particles. So watch how this works. Got the hot water. We start by putting it in the glass jar. That should be enough. Oh, you can see we already got steam going on, right? Okay, now I'm going to put some, some ice cubes right on this lid to make it cold. I see if I can get them right up against the bottom of this lid. There we go. We can pile it. Oop, we can pile. This is where I'm going to put it. Pile those on there. Well, it looks like we already got a pretty good cloud going, doesn't it? Some of it's condensed on the outside of that glass, but we can do even better. So we're going to provide some air particles. This is kind of in place of the pollen or the dust or the smoke that's up in the atmosphere where the clouds are. This hairspray, just a dash, will do it. Woo. All right. Some of my ice cubes want to escape. That's okay. As long as it's cold. Look at that. Now oh, that's much better. Look at that cloud right in there. It kind of looks like fog, doesn't it? So we've just made a cloud in the jar. So let's review how this happened. We've got moisture that's coming up and some of that's evaporating. This is very hot water that's at the bottom of the jar. When I touch this jar, I can feel how hot it is. And then it evaporates and impacts this cold surface at the top. And then it condenses along the particles that we've just shot in there from this hairspray. Now, if I take this out, watch. I think some of that, well, it's already trying to escape. Look at that. Take that out. Isn't that impressive? Look at that. And believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever done this experiment. That's how easy it is. You can do it too. All right. I bet you can't wait to show your brother, sister, your friends, your parents. This is one you can do over and over again and have lots of fun with. See, I've come, oh, it kind of evaporated there. I'll put that right back on and see if it comes back. It might take a minute, but I bet it will. Very nice. I like it. So now you have an idea of how clouds form in the atmosphere. I love watching clouds. They come to us. So if we're stuck at home, you can look out the window and see the clouds. Or you can go out back and spot the clouds as well. Pretty cool, huh? A cloud in a jar. This is just the first experiment. We've got more coming your way. Today at 2, join T62's Alondra Anaya with a bilingual lesson, a rain experiment, and flood safety tips, too. It's something everyone should know. We hope you're enjoying weather education at home.